Okay, so let's take a look at question number 16. <clears throat> um, it says here, how many people would need to be surveyed on a healthcare survey, I guess, to estimate the mean of the entire population to within two units, some two measurement units, um, if the standard deviation is determined to be 12 and we want it to be within 92% confidence level. Okay, so this is a, uh, an application of the standard normal curve, um, a statistical application where we, we're looking to see how big of a sample do we need to say that we can produce a value that we are 92% sure um, it is always um, going to be contained within there. So let's just draw a little sketch here to kind of understand what, uh, what we're looking at here visually. So I'm going to draw a sample of a curve, standard normal curve. Okay, and it should be as, try to be as symmetrical as we can. Okay, I'll extend it out a little bit to both sides. Um, we have the middle of the curve, which is going to be our mean. So I'll just mark the peak there. And the mean, um, the population mean of a standard distribution is given by the letter mu. And what we want to do is we want to know to be within a 92% confidence interval that we are going to capture some value. So we know that the whole curve, the area of the entire curve as it goes from um, essentially negative infinity or, or something very, very low on this side to positive infinity um, is going to be 100%. So 92%, I'm just going to mark in some arbitrary ticks here, we're going to say is going to capture the vast majority of the curve, right? So I, what I'm going to do is we'll mark that in here. We'll change the color and I'm just going to kind of shade this part in and this is supposed to be 92% of the value of the curve. Now it doesn't quite look very symmetrical but if we were drawing this uh, perfectly it would be um, evenly distributed on both sides. Okay so what we're saying here is that this is our confidence interval CI that we want to capture and so what we need to think about is, well, where are, where is the actual boundary or the errors for this, this, um, for this curve? So we know 100% of the curve would be everything from 0 to 100. So that means there's 8% um, missing from our captured space. But that 8% is going to be divided up um, evenly on both sides of the curve. So what we could think of here is, let me just change to another color, purple, is that this little shading part of this curve here, this is going to represent half of the missing confidence interval, or in this case, um, 4%. Okay, and then the other part of the curve right here is also the missing confidence interval, and that's going to also represent 4%. So it's 100% minus 92 um, but we split it in half, and that means there's a 4% chance on either side of the curve that we're not going to capture that value. Okay, so if we were to think about, okay, if 0% if is right here, and let's say 100% is right here, okay, then that means from 0 to 4, this line that we've drawn in here is actually going to represent 4%. But this line right here would be representing 96%. Okay, just so all the numbers make sense. And just remember, like 0 to 100, we really can't actually ever capture 0 to 100, but we, can, we would get infinitesimally close to that. And then what we're saying is that our, our uh, measurement, so our value this mean that we're trying to capture, we're going to be, is going to be with contained within two units. So that means our mean um, from wherever the population mean is up to this point here, the error is going to be plus two units and the error here will be minus two units. Okay, so if I kind of draw a little bracket to keep, keep all this together here, this range of values from this 4% line to the 96% line is going to be equivalent to the mean being um, plus up to plus two units away from it and up to minus two units below it. 
So the equation that you've seen in terms of how this, this works is what you're saying is we have this experimental average, this mean, so that's called X bar. Okay, and we are going to be, um, if we are maximum of two units away, so that's minus the error value, <clears throat> that is going to be less than our population mean. And then we will never be more than the experimental mean plus that error value of two units away. So, so if you can just imagine, we've got like some unknown variable here, x, x bar. So x is this experimental mean. We will never be more than two units less from the true mean. And then when x bar is out here, we will never be more than two units away from the true mean, which is the middle the, or the value mu. So this is what our, that's what that um, confidence interval equation is telling us here. So this is our confidence interval. Okay, so that's graphically what this is. So what we really need to do is we need, we want to, how do we use this to calculate some values? Okay, remember, we're actually always, we're looking in this question to calculate how many people. So we're going to be looking for what's called the sample size. So the way we need to do is we need to go back to what our original equation was. So in your notes, there is that equation of the, the confidence interval which is, I'll just squeeze it in here, which is your sample or your, your experimental mean minus the, this statistical calculation, which is Z score alpha divided by two all over the square root of N. Okay, and that's the population mean, less than the population mean, and then we're going to add the other side to it. Okay, and it's Z alpha divided by two times sigma over N. So let's just start filling in some values here. So what we're trying to figure out. So <clears throat> we know our, uh, we know our standard deviation sigma is equal to two. Okay, so let's write that down. Let's just do that a little bit better here. Sigma is equal to two. Okay, we need to know what the alpha value is and then our alpha divided by two. So our alpha value is basically the, the sum parts outside of the confidence interval. If we know we want a 92% confidence interval, okay, that means our alpha value is going to be um, the part that's outside of this is 8%. And then alpha divided by two is just essentially splitting it in half. So it's 4%. Okay, so that's, that's what our alpha two value is. So now what we need to do is we, look, we need to look at what the Z score is for that alpha value. So we are calculating the Z score here, okay, for 0 0.04 as a decimal. So how do we do that? Well, easiest way is you use your calculator and you're gonna look up something called the inverse norm function. Okay, which allows us to find the Z value um, given a probability value, okay, which is the percentage. So we're going to use 0 0.04 and we are going to find that it's equal to negative 1.75% or negative 1.75 as a Z value. So that's actually this little tick right here. It's negative 1.75. Now, there is, this is a mirror image of the curve. So that means the other value here has to be 1.75 also. But that would just come about by taking the inverse norm of the, um, the other side, okay, the interval, uh, the limit um, for the probability here, which is going to be 0.96, okay? So we wanna, at the 96% line, on our standard normal curve, we want to know what is the Z value on that axis. So that is going to be equal to 1.75. So you can see they're both, they're both essentially the same. They just differ by a, um, a negative sign. Okay. And then once we have that, that is going to be our, our Z alpha divided by two. What we're looking for is we're looking to solve for N. Okay. Now the other thing we do know is we know what the error value is. The error range or the error value is equal to two. Okay, so two is what our error is 
in this equation. We're, we're plus two or we're minus two. Okay, so with this, we can say, we can have the following equation here. We're actually saying that the error is equal to um, these, this z alpha divided by two sigma over n. So our equation we can, that we're really going to solve is this. We say error is equal to z alpha divided by two times sigma all over the square root of n. Two there. Okay, and we want to find what n is equal to. So now we just plug in some of our values. So we know our error is two. Okay, we know our z alpha divide by two. Um, there's two choices here. We, we, we're gonna always use the positive one, but the negative one just means it, because it, we're on, there's, there's two sides to this. So there's like a minus z alpha divided by two is equal to sigma times sigma over square root of n, or there's the positive one. So we're, in this case, I'm gonna use the positive one. Um, so I don't have to put the negative sign in front of it, but the two values here are gonna be the same. So we're just gonna do this um, times sigma, which is equal to, did I say it's not two, it's actually 12, sorry, 12. And then we're gonna take that as the square root of n. Now, if you wanted to use the negative value, you could do the same thing, but it's going to, you're gonna to have to just carry the negative sign from the other side over. So instead, it'll be the negative of negative 1.75 times 12 all over the square root of n. Sorry, I made a mistake there again. Okay, and then <clears throat> either equation is gonna work. Um, you don't have to s solve for both. In, in a question like this, if you're not sure, just drop the negative sign and you just make the error the z value equals to that. And then here we're just gonna do a simple cross multiply. <clears throat> so what we're gonna get here in either case is we're gonna get two times the square root of n is equal to 1.75 times 12, which is going to give us 21. Okay, and then square root of n, I'll just move this down here. Square root of n is equal to 21 divided by two. Okay, and then to solve for n, we have to square both sides. Okay, so we square everything. So this is gonna give us our n value. And when you work this out as a decimal, you're gonna see it's 110 point, um, 110.25, which means that really our answer has to be 110 because it's a whole number. So the number of people we need to survey is 110. That's the minimum value we need in order to get um, a 92% confidence interval. So the 110 is what we need for survey to have 92% CI confidence interval. Okay, we can do more than that, but the minimum, if we wanna hit that 92% level statistically is we have to do 110. Okay, so that's how you uh, go through this question. It's, it's, a, it's an application of statistics using that formula. It's a little bit, um, it's not a hard calculation to do, but you do have to understand where all the parts are coming from. Okay, and then you have to be able to break it down that confidence interval equation and understand what is the exact thing that we're trying to find here um, in terms of what the error is and then what parts that we need to calculate. All right, so that's how we do that question. Hopefully that um, helps you out.